In this video, I'm gonna show you three tools that I use every single day on my Mac and I basically couldn't live without. Uh, the first is Alfred, which allows me to do quick search for uh, folders and different things on my computer and I like it better than the built-in spotlight. There's also Rectangle, which allows me to use keyboard shortcuts to move windows around on my screen. And then the last one is Alt-Tab, uh, which allows me to switch between my windows and shows me a full window preview. Um, now, I know a lot of these features are built into other operating systems. They're not built into a Mac, and these are the preferred apps I like to use to get those features. So in this video, I'm gonna describe these tools and show you some of the settings and how I set them up. On a Mac, there are no built-in keyboard shortcuts for arranging windows on a screen. Now, I know you might be on Windows and you're like, oh, that's built into Windows, or you might be on some Linux distribution and you're like, oh, that's built in. It's not built on a Mac built in on a Mac, so we need an app for it. And the app that I prefer for that is called Rectangle. Um, and this is actually um, uh, a, a newer app. The one that I used to use was called Spectacle, but um, is no longer in development. Rectangle uh, gets frequent updates and is still in active development. But let's go ahead and install it with Brew. So if I do Brew, brew Install Rectangle, yeah, so there's all, there's a lot of other tools. So there's like Magnet. Uh, some people are mentioning, yeah, so in the chat, mention things you use to manage Windows on a Mac. Yabai? Never heard of Yabai. Moo Amethyst? Never heard of Amethyst. <laughs> Frank, Frank just uses his mouse. Frank just goes like this, which is fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> oh, Better Touch Tool. That's another one, yeah. Power Toys? I do not have a Mac, yeah. So there's, like I said, for a lot of these things that I'm going to be installing, there are other alternatives. The ones that I'm showing you are the ones that have worked for me, so I'm just gonna keep using them for the most part. Okay, so we've installed Rectangle. Uh, let's launch it. Uh, we will have to give it accessibility permissions. So because it's moving windows on our screen, um, we specifically need to give it permission to do that. So I need to go in, click this lock, type my password, and then give it accessibility permissions. If I check this box, now Rectangle has accessibility permissions. Um, I could choose the default recommended shortcuts. I'm just gonna go with Spectacle because it is the shortcuts that I'm familiar with. I'm not sure how different the spectac Spectacle shortcuts are from Rectangle, but you can see here, these are all of the built-in shortcuts. So I believe this is option, command, option and command left, option, command right, etc. But watch this. Boom, left half of the screen. Boom, right half of the screen. Top, bottom, left, uh, <laughs> left corner, right corner, left bottom corner, right bottom corner. Uh, take that, put it in the center. So uh, it has all of those shortcuts so I can just uh, move, move things around on my screen. And I've been using it for so long, or I use, uh, uh, spectacle for a really long time and now I'm using rectangle. It's the same keyboard shortcuts that I have all of those memorized. So if you click on it, you can actually see what the shortcuts are. You can also just uh, choose a specific one and it will move it in that direction. But this is a lifesaver. It's one of my one of my favorite uh, window management apps. That is a rectangle. Uh, the other productivity app I like to use is called alt tap. So again, people are gonna say, Windows does that by default, or my Linux OS can do that, but a Mac can't. So on a Mac, when you press uh, Command Tab, which is the way to switch between applications, it only shows the application icon. Um, and I like to be able to see a preview of the app before I switch to it, and Alt Tab is a way of doing that. So let's install it. All right, now that we have Alt Tab, we can launch it, and uh, we will have to give it accessibility permissions very similar to Rectangle. Okay, so uh, I now have allowed that, and now Alt-Tab can do its job. So um, I like to set the um, keyboard shortcut to just be Command-Tab so that it replaces the built-in Mac one. You can see right now it's Option-Tab, but let's just try it. So if I do uh, Option-Tab, look at that. So now we get window previews um, like this, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and again, it's probably built into whatever operating system you're using, but it's not built into a Mac, and Alt-Tab is a really good tool for that. I've used other apps in the past, so HyperSwitch is one that I used. Um, somebody recommended Alt-Tab, and this, uh, you can find them on GitHub, they are open source, um, but it's pretty sweet. So, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to replace uh, Command-Tab. So now, when I do Command-Tab, 
uh, it, it shows me the window pre previews instead of having to do uh, alt tab. <laughs> No, I, I understand, Goofer. It's just a lot of a lot of people will usually be in the YouTube comments and be like, "Oh, this dude just spent an hour setting up all this stuff I can already do on my computer." You know that it's fine. It's fine. And then, lastly, the probably the most frequently used, absolutely definitely the most frequently used uh, productivity app I use is called Alfred. Um, and people have mentioned alternatives in the chat. So there's also a thing called Raycast. Um, and there's a few other alternatives out there. I like Alfred. In the past, I've bought uh, an Alf Alfred Power Tools license. It works. I love it. I'm going to install it. <laughs> so um, Alfred essentially replaces the Quick Launcher. So on a Mac, when you press Command Space, uh, that launches Spotlight. Um, and this one is kind of slow. So like, if we if we search, uh, what was the person's name earlier? Was it jo Jack in the Bush? Yeah. <laughs> So you see that it actually it actually takes a second before it really even searches my file system. Like it's just really slow, um, and uh, you you can't do like uh, specific workflow launches or command launches. And I actually don't like that it defaults searching the web. Like in a way, this is kind of just a key logger, right? So as as you're typing in keys, it's sending that off to get. Uh, search results, and so literally every time you open up Spotlight Search, your your key presses are essentially getting sent to some remote server. I don't like that. Um, I'm going to install Alfred, which is essentially just a replacement for that, and has a lot of other cool settings and workflows that you can install as well. Okay, so Alfred is installed. Let's launch it. Alfred 5. Oh, last time I was using Alfred 4. <laughs> But uh, let's let's go. Do I think Alfred is safer to use? I think like Alfred is a, a has been around for a very long time, so they are a respect respectable product and company. Um, and I have mine set up so that it doesn't search the web unless it can't unless it can't find results. So if I type something in that's not found, then yeah, that will potentially do a web search. But actually, it doesn't even do the web search embedded. It, it will actually launch. Um, your browser with the search term, which which is fine. Yeah, and so uh, Alfred can do math. Um, you can set up workflows where like you could just instantly launch several apps that you prefer. I also like that it has um, you can more fine finely tune what shows up in the search results. So here we go. Um, I don't have an Alfred license. I'll I'll, I'll get it later and then install it. Um, but let's uh, set up all of the settings and permissions real quick. Okay, so I've set up all the permissions, uh, and now Alfred's setup is complete, um, and then let's start it. Um, I don't store contacts on my Mac, so I'm just not even going to allow contact access. And then here you can see the Alfred settings. So by default, the way to pull it up is option space, and then uh, now if I search for Jack, it doesn't send my, my key presses somewhere. I can specifically say, oh, go search Google for that or search Amazon. Um, also, if you buy the, um, the power pack, then you can uh, specify other search engines and stuff like that. I believe I'll have to look through the settings. Maybe I can even set DuckDuckGo here. But uh, one of the things that I want to do is set it up so that it searches the file system. So if I search for uh, Jack, uh, well, not there. If I search for Jack, I should see all folder results that match that term. So let's set that up. Yeah, I see some people in the chat mentioning Raycast. I looked into it. I'm still going to keep using Alfred just because I've used it for so long. Raycast seems pretty cool, and it does. It is free. You don't have to. You don't have to pay for it. So you should check out Raycast if if you. Because uh, there there are some features in here that are locked behind a paywall. You will have to buy a license. I don't mind that. I'm supporting the developers of Alfred. I'm a developer myself, um, so it's nice to support other developers. Uh, whenever we're, we're searching, I do want to search through folders, um, and I can allow it to search through documents as well. So now that I've done that, if I search for Jack, we can see there's a folder on my on my machine called Jack in the Bush, um, which is great. So that 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 shows up as a result. I like that. Um, you could also set it up to actually show files, so if you want to search for code and stuff like that. But I usually, for me, that's just a little bit too too messy. Uh, searching folders is enough for me. I'll show you one other thing I like to set up here is uh, a shortcut for 
uh, sleep. So um, I actually just do the letter S for that. And then also for lock, I do the letter L. So that allows me to easily just pull up this, type the letter S. For now, it doesn't, it's, it's showing me all the other stuff, but I have to choose um, this for it to recognize that when I type S, that should be the preferred option. But that allows me to instantly sleep my computer. I'm gonna do it. Are you all ready? I'm gonna sleep my machine. Let's see what happens. This could ruin the stream. Here I go. Okay, it wants to control system events. I have to allow it. <laughs> okay, so it slept. It slept my Mac. Um, but typically, typically, what I like to do is uh, when I'm done using my computer, if I'm even if it's just sitting on a desk at home, I turn off the Wi-Fi and I put it to sleep. Uh, the other other thing I can do is lock it. But now that the letter S. I, uh, when I typed the letter S, it, uh, it, I, I chose sleep. Now if I type S, sleep is at the top of the list. So your mo most recent used things are always recommended first. So that makes it so that I can just launch it, launch it, press S and instantly put my computer to sleep. Uh, I can do the same thing with lock. Um, so now I can just command space L and then uh, lock my machine. Mm, yeah, there's some other options in here. And like you can see, there's lots of like web search stuff. I'm actually gonna disable all of this Google stuff and then see if DuckDuckGo shows up as an option. I've never actually set this up. Cool, so now that I've only uh, searched for, or I've only checked DuckDuckGo, let's see what happens when I search for something, oh, not that, uh, this. When I search for something that isn't there. No, so I think these quick actions are actually specified elsewhere. So uh, Verno Mo Moe is, or Mo is asking, is saying, if I go to default results and then set up fallback results. Yeah, okay, so that's what I thought. <laughs> it does cost money to change your that search engine to be DuckDuckGo, but that's fine. Like I said, I like to support these guys because, um, or these people, because I've used this app a ton. Let's set up the keyboard shortcut. So um, right now it's option space. I want it to be command space. I can't even type command space without launching Spotlight. So let me go into my keyboard settings and uh, change my keyboard shortcuts. So um, in here, if I go to Spotlight, I can uncheck Show Spotlight Search for Command Space. Uh, and then now when I press Command Space inside of Alfred, I've tied it to this. And now if I press Command Space, we get Alfred instead. So just look how fast it is. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I like that it has this built-in feature. So if you type something and then press Command L, it instantly blows up that text. So this is a really cool feature for like uh, if you're a presenter and if you ever are like you want to type in a URL. So if you go to coding.garden slash support, you can find various ways of supporting me. Awesome. OK. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, one computer guy, like folder search is probably the most common thing I use it for. Like, I mean, I mean, right now there's no data on this computer, but if I'm searching for a specific folder in pictures or documents, it launches it really easy. Um, yeah, and, I, and so I haven't tried Raycast. Again, I'll leave this in the video because I know a lot of people are recommending it. Try Raycast, leave a comment in the, in the, in, leave a comment down below. If you like it, tell me why you like it better. I prefer Alfred. Like I said, all of these tools have alternatives. Uh, there, are, there are different things you could use and could install. Um, these are the ones that I prefer, but if you prefer other tools, pil flee <laughs> please feel free to throw a comment uh, down below and uh, let us know what tools you prefer and why. Thank you for watching this, uh, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving that, 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 that speech flub in there. Yeah, I'm keeping it. Words are hard. <laughs>